no entrance exams or letters of reference required. There are no tests, no comparison with others, and the only homework is to challenge yourself. If you're finding life particularly heavy going, feeling loaded down, and if you're restless, irritable, and discontent, perhaps you have the lenses in your glasses reversed and can only see negativity or living your life on wishes and hopes. You found a place where synergy and synchronicity are combined and where we actually show you how to make magic, abracadabra, creating what you speak, not necessarily material things, however intangibles no currency can purchase. Let us help you help yourself to fully participate in your life. Let's use the power of your mind and its energy to learn to think not from our thoughts but rather than at them and become a butterfly emerging from the chrysalis. Thinking back to Dorothy when she landed in Oz and opened the door to a world of color. Come with us. Detach and untangle. Identify and describe and live a life without definitive expectations. Explode into our world of full impact mindfulness. Open the door to your authentic self and let the adventure begin. Welcome. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and I'm joined as usual by my good friend, co-host, and producer of this program, Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike, I've often been asked by folks how we come up with these ideas and scenarios for our show. What we do is we rely on inspiration, do we not? Absolutely. You never know what's going to trigger something in your head. And one of our premises, one of our admonitions, one of our challenges here on Fishing Without Bait is to pay attention on purpose, walking through our life with our eyes wide open rather than our eyes wide shut. I had the opportunity recently to go to Boston, Massachusetts, and I was strolling around uh, Boston Common and visiting some of the sites like any tourist would do, I guess. And I came past a graveyard where uh, Paul Revere was buried and Benjamin Franklin's parents. And uh, to get there, we had to go through Philadelphia. And I was trying to connect the dots, as we often do here. And connecting the dots, I'm looking at these people of tremendous courage passing through Philadelphia, where the Declaration of Independence was uh, signed. I got to thinking of myself, this fits in nicely with full impact mindfulness in writing a personal declaration of independence. Have you ever thought about writing your own declaration of independence, Mike? No, not so much writing, but I feel like, you know, through life and, you know, you know we're both people that have kind of uh, made changes in our lives and decided something enough was enough with one thing or another. Right. And I think that is a little bit of that declaration say no more of this thing happening. And when we talk about challenging people, we talk about them to confront the things in their life, to label and identify what's holding them back. We often talk about people dropping the rock, do we not? And Mike, as we identify so often on our particular program, the obstacle, the glacier, the things that are holding us back is our old friend, the emotion called fear, the thing that always seems to stalk us. And if you remember the quotation that we had in a previous podcast where we spoke about fear, or our friend Georgia Dare spoke about everything that we want is on the other side of fear, is on the other side of fear. So we often talk about getting thoughts and feelings out of our head and out on paper to look at them rather than from them. And making a personal declaration of independence from whatever that might be. So let's talk about you for a little bit. Uh oh, so let's talk oh about, now we're in trouble. Let's talk about some of the things that you've declared independence from in your life. For me, declaring the independence of not settling has been a big thing for me. And to push past the fear, you know, not, not accepting that and not, not kind of saying a oh, woe is me around those kinds of activities. Sure. So many of us still hold on to things and we want to declare independence. So what we'd like to do, what I'd like everyone out there to do is to label and identify at least one thing that they'd like to declare independence from. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's drugs or alcohol or some type of addiction to, to anything that's holding you back. We need to label and identify what rocks we're holding on to and which ones we want to let go of. And number two, how we're going to do that. So it's real important that 
we commit to ourselves. And what is more important of a commitment than to yourself? Actually writing it down and then at the bottom, do you remember who signed the largest autograph, who signed the largest signature on the Declaration of Independence? I believe it was John Hancock. It was John Hancock, yes. So uh, that's a common colloquialism now. Show me your John Hancock. Do you remember why he did that? I don't actually. He wrote it large enough that he said that King George could read it without his glasses on. <laughs> sending, Just sending a, another way to just send a message, right? Right. So when we talk about signing your name, when we sign our name on something, what does that what does that mean, Mike? It's your approval. It's your stamp on it. It's your stamp on it. It is your seal. Does your word mean something to you, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So when we talk about doing the next right thing, when we're talking about being courteous and respectful to every person we meet, that means doing what we say and saying what we do. And at the bedrock, we've often talked about the foundation of our lives, the foundation of all our recoveries from anything is honesty and the ability to tell the truth. So when you put your stamp, your seal, which is your signature, that means that you avow and affirm that you are going to go to any lengths to fulfill that particular contract, that Declaration of Independence. And remember, you're making that commitment to yourself. When we make commitments to others, how does that generally work? Let's say that uh, your wife, your partner, would want you to stop chewing your fingernails. I don't think you do, but let's just use that as an example. So she wants to have you stop chewing your fingernails. You don't want to stop. However, you say to her, okay, if you really want me to, I will. Uh, is your heart in that? No, not really. No. So committing to yourself really, really means something. And signing that signature, it's really important that you label it and identify, number one, what specifically you're declaring independence from. So if someone would say, I'm declaring independence from sadness, that's a, that's a broad brush, is it not? So we want to be specific when we often talk about labeling and describing. And for those who are unfamiliar with that concept, you may want to go back to some previous podcasts where we ask people to do that. Uh, if you remember, Mike, when we did the check-in on to see whether you're alive, whether to close your eyes as hard as you could and open them and imagine it's the first time that you ever saw anything, to be in absolute silence and then imagine it's the first time you heard anything or tasted something or felt something or to hold your breath for as long as you can, then take that first breath and really savor it and enjoy it. And it's the first breath that you've ever taken to start off living your life. That's the type of commitment that we're looking for when somebody declares independence independence. I'd be more than interested to hear from our listeners out there if they'd care to contact the show, just to share some things that they would like to or have declared their independence from and how they did it. So it's a contract with yourself, isn't it? Absolutely. There are also consequences to breaking contracts, are there not, Mike? Yes, uh, that, 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 that contract breaking fee. I mean, we all know that from our cell phone plans and our cable <laughs> providers. Indeed. Indeed. Making a contract with yourself. And as we often discuss on this program, we often talk about making choices as one of the most powerful gifts that we have. However, we also have to play the tape the whole way through and remember the consequences for breaking that contract, the commitment to ourself. So for anyone out there who would like to have some possible help with making a declaration of independence, perhaps uh, some method or some encouragement on how to do that, we suggest that you do contact us at this show and you're going to be kind enough to let people know how to do that. So I'd like to hear some personal declarations of independence. And you remember what uh, the mayor of Munchkinville said? Men and women, this is a, a day, day of, of independence. independence. At long last, let the word go out Throughout the land, the wicked witch at last is dead. The declaration. The let's 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 put an end. Let's put an end to some of the things that are holding you back. Let's identify and drop those rocks. That's our challenge for you today. That's our challenge for everyone out there. To find their independence, to find their freedom, in whatever large or small part of that life it may be. 
And as always, do a kindness to another. Do a kindness for yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive another. Namaste. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com, where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. Fishing Without Bait is a production of Namaste Holistic Counseling, PC.